Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Dr Manur Bangash welcome to my youtube channel hope you guys are doing well topic of this video is calcium ATPases or pumps these calcium pumps they transport calcium ions across the membrane by the process of active primary active transport so i'll just revise these three topics although they were discussed in the previous video but i'll just do a little revision so let's get started primary active transport is defined as movement of molecules or ions across the cell membrane in combination with carrier protein against the concentration gradient using energy derived directly from the breakdown of adenosine triphosphate or the ATP. Okay, so channel is a transmembrane protein which moves the molecules or ions down the concentration gradient without utilization of energy. This diagram here shows lipid bilayer and a transmembrane protein which is functioning as a channel. On this side we have more concentration of molecules and on this side the concentration is less. So what a channel does is that it will transport these molecules or ions from high concentration towards the low concentration area and during this process no energy is utilized whereas if you want to move these molecules from low concentration towards the high concentration then that cannot be done by a channel for that function we have pumps so pump is a transmembrane protein that moves molecules or ions against the concentration gradient and by utilizing energy. This diagram shows the lipid bilayer and the protein functioning as a pump. On this side the molecules or the ions are in greater concentration and on this side low concentration so what pump does is that it moves these molecules or ions from low concentration towards the high concentration area and during this process energy is utilized and that energy is basically used by these proteins in order to move these molecules against the concentration gradient Okay, we have two main types of the membrane pumps ATPases and secondary transporters. ATPases we have <clears throat> the P type ATPases whereas in secondary transporters we have two types the antiporters and the symporters. These two will be discussed later in the next video under the topic of secondary active transport these p type of atpases are of three types the sodium potassium atpases the calcium atpases hydrogen potassium atpases or pumps this ases is mostly used with enzymes then why are these pumps or these transmembrane proteins called ATPases the reason is that they act as enzymes and break down ATP molecule into ADP and phosphate during the process of active transport in P 
P-type enzymes, this P stands for phosphate. Why are they called P-type is because during the process of active transport, when ADP is broken, broken down into ADP plus phosphate, this phosphate is accepted by these pumps or the transmembrane proteins and due to this reason they are called p-type this phosphate group it provides energy for these pumps and they will only be activated for this whole process only when they get phosphorylated or when this phosphate group gets attached to them. This P here, it stands for phosphate. Okay, next is the calcium ATPases or the calcium pump. This is defined as a transmembrane protein that moves two calcium ions out of the cell against the concentration gradient by using energy directly from the breakdown of ATP. Okay, this is just a general diagram showing lipid bilayer, the calcium pump showing the transport of two calcium ions from intracellular to extracellular space against its concentration gradient and by utilizing energy from the breakdown of ATP. Okay, this diagram shows the structure of the calcium pump or the calcium ATPases. This green part is the transmembrane domain. This part it lies or it is embedded in the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane. We have two domains or the binding sites for calcium ions, and there is this N domain, P domain, and A domain. This transmembrane domain is embedded in the lipid bilayer. As we can see here, this is the lipid bilayer and this is the transmembrane domain which is lying within this lipid bilayer. And these three domains, N domain, P domain and A domain, they will not lie within this layer. They are on the inside of the cell or on the intracellular side of the cell membrane. Okay, this N domain is that part to which the nucleotide part of the ATP is attached. And let's say this is the nucleotide part of ATP and this is the phosphate part of ATP. So this part will be attached to the N domain of the calcium ATPase. And it is called N domain because the nucleotide part of the ATP is attached to this part. So N comes from the nucleotide. Okay, next is the P domain. So P domain is that which accepts the phosphate group which is released as a result of breakdown of ATP into ADP and phosphate. This is the part which is attached to the P domain and this P domain it gets its name from phosphate. Then the last one is A domain. It is that part which connects the transmembrane domain with the P and N domain. This A domain, it accepts the energy which is uh, released as a result of breakdown of ATP and it transfers that energy to this 
transmembrane domain whereas when this energy is transferred it results in conformational changings in the transmembrane domain properties of calcium atpases or calcium pump and during the process of this transport of calcium ions it act as an enzyme and it breaks down the atp into adp and phosphate which provides energy for this process of active transport it is a p type of uh, transmembrane pump because it only gets activated for this active transport of calcium ions when it accepts the phosphate group which is released by the breakdown of ATP that's why it is called P type calcium ATPases a pump act as a pump and it transports two calcium ions against the concentration gradient from inside of the cell towards the outside of the cell okay so calcium pumps are found in the membrane of different cells and in the in the mitochondria of all cells and in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cells in sarcoplasmic reticulum these calcium pumps or the calcium atpases are called cerca this s here stands for sarcoplasmic e stands for endoplasmic R stands for reticulum C stands for calcium and A stands for ATPs ATPases so it is sarcoplasmic or endoplasmic reticulum calcium atpases so sarcoplasmic reticulum is a special kind of endoplasmic reticulum found in muscle cells and its main function is to regulate the calcium storage as well as release okay now we'll see how this calcium pump works so initially what happens is that on arrival of stimulus the calcium ions that are greater in concentration in the extracellular fluid will move down the concentration gradient through the calcium channel into intracellular fluid where its concentration is low this calcium will then take part in the muscle contraction now after muscle contraction we need to get rid of these excessive calcium ions otherwise your muscles will stay in that contracted state so in order to move these calcium ions back into the extracellular fluid we need a pump because this action is cannot be performed by a channel Okay, so to move the calcium ions out of the cell, we need the action of calcium pumps. This is the calcium pump, and the opening of this transmembrane domain is initially towards the intracellular side or towards the inside of the cell. So what happens that two calcium ions will enter into the transmembrane domain, and they will bind to the calcium binding sites okay so the moment these calcium ions they gets attached 
to their binding sites, the nucleotide part of ATP will be attached to the end domain. And this attachment of ATP initiates conformational changes. And this conformational change will start from these three domains. They will arrange themselves in this kind of arrangement in which they will be blocking the opening of this transmembrane domain resulting in entrapment of these calcium ions inside the transmembrane domain. After this ATP is broken down into ADP and phosphate. This phosphate will be then accepted by the P domain. And now your pump is phosphorylated as a result of binding of phosphate to the P domain. And this ADP will be detached from the N domain and the energy which is released from the ATP will be accepted by this A domain and A domain will transfer this energy to the transmembrane domain which will result in the conformational changes and from this type of conformation we get this type of conformation or the shape of transmembrane domain in which it is opening towards the extracellular fluid or outside the cell. Now these calcium domains or the binding sites will lose affinity for calcium as a result calcium will be released into the lumen or into the extracellular fluid and at the end the phosphate group will be released from the P domain and the pump will regain its original conformation that it had in the step 1 which is this conformation this is the end step as well as the first step so this whole cycle is repeated resulting in the transfer of two calcium ions out of the cell per cycle. So this was all about this topic. Hope you guys liked this video. Please don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe my channel. Thank you. Dafis and take care.